So Luka Doncic has taken the NBA by storm. And you've probably seen every single NBA YouTuber making a video on Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic this. And most of the time, those same YouTubers were the guys saying that Luka Doncic was going to be a bust before the NBA draft. And I just like to say for all you guys that are new here, I've been saying it for years. My very, I think it was like my fifth video on this channel was basically just talking about how great I believed Luka Doncic was going to be at the next level. And it's safe to say that that video has aged very well. And with Luka Doncic being such a big success, the stigma for drafting a not particularly athletic European and drafting a player just based on his skill and their IQ is actually starting to go away a little bit, which is a great, great thing for European prospects. People are starting to look more and more at Europeans in the draft. Scouts are looking everywhere to find the next Luka Doncic. And to be completely honest, there was never a Luka Doncic before Luka Doncic, and it may be another 50 years until we see the next time an 18-year-old wins MVP of EuroLeague. So, realistically, there's not another Luka Doncic. But there is one player who could easily be a top five pick in the 2020 NBA draft, who I believe is going to have an incredible NBA career, and that player is Denny Avdija. So before this video starts, I'd just like to say we are doing a daily December. Big thank you to everyone that subscribed recently. We are uploading a video every single day. Today's the 13th, we've still got another 18 to go. And this is actually getting harder and harder to come up with ideas. So if you guys could leave it in the comments or even just message me on Instagram uh, with video ideas, that would be great. Instagram's probably a little bit better, so I'll definitely read them. And also we are trying to hit 80,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We've started off like 63,000. We're now nearly 78,000, which is incredible. So 80,000 by the end of the year would just be unreal. But anyway, now let's get on to the video. So Denny of DJ is a guy that very, very few people watching this video have probably heard of. I say very, very few of my subscribers have probably heard of him. And to be honest, he's not that hyped up a Euro prospect. I think in a year's time he will be, but he's not like Dumboya. He's not like Doncic was, but Doncic obviously was an exception. However, this is a guy that is an incredible, incredible basketball player. As a 17 year old playing against kids three years older than him, he was in the All-Star 5 of the FIBA Under 20s European Championship. And that's how I found out about him. One of my former teammates, Alish Font, was actually on the Spanish Under 20s team, one of the top players on that team. And when I watched the Israel team well beat them in the quarterfinal of the European Championship, I started to look into a lot of their players, and I noticed that this guy was three years younger than everyone else. So then I just started looking into him more and more and more, I saw that he's on almost every 2020 mock draft, going anywhere from late second round to the number three pick in the draft. So seeing how much of a gap there was, I did a lot more research and watched a lot more of him play. And I advise anyone watching this video to watch him play in full games or at least watch his European Championship highlights. Obviously, I can't show any of that for copyright reasons, which is really annoying. But please just watch him if you want a better understanding of his game. So with the success of Luka in the NBA, a lot of people are looking at this guy as potentially the next Luka Doncic. And before I talk about Deja's game, he is not the same player. The biggest thing I feel with Luka Doncic is that he just has he just has a little bit of American flair about him. He's just an unbelievable player to watch. That step back jumper is so nice. Some of the passes he makes, the flashy passes, the high degree of difficulty passes, they are just absolutely incredible. Luka Doncic is box office. Whereas Denny Avdija is a guy who I think is going to come right into the NBA and make a big, big impact. And I think he is one of the perfect modern NBA players. However, unlike Luka, this kid's not box office. This guy is just the most fundamentally sound player in the draft. Avdija is a six foot eight small forward. And even though he's listed as a small forward, he is the perfect player for positionless basketball. Playing for the underage teams in Israel who were often in the B championships at European level, he was playing the point guard on offense while guarding the other team's center. In the under 18's European B Championship, he was the team's tallest player and was also pretty much their offense. And in the game against Holland, they were down three points with a minute and a half to go, and he ended the game scoring seven points in a row in a win. Watching him play in the under 20's European Championship against kids three years older than them was incredible. Israel actually won this tournament with Avdija making the All-Star 5, averaging 12.7 points, 6.4 rebounds, 1.1 assists, and 1.3 steals per game. Those low, and those low assist numbers, trust me, they don't show anything about his passing. If drafted by the right team, I honestly think he could be a serious, serious player, a major contributor on a championship contender, almost right away. 
He's probably the best shooter in the draft right now. He's already got NBA range and a hand in his face doesn't seem to phase him at all. I don't think I've ever seen a person hit as many and one threes as this guy does. Avdija also has elite court vision, is a smart passer, a really good passer in transition, and while watching him playing at the under-20s level where he was mainly a spot-up shooter, doesn't really show how good a passer he is. If you want to watch him play under-18s where he's the primary ball handler, he's averaging like six assists per game. He's got an effective handle, which while he's not going to do anything spectacular, but he seems to be able to still get to the basket quite well, and he does shield the ball quite well. I don't think he's going to be elite at getting to the basket, which I think is going to be his biggest downside at the NBA level, but I think his jump shot may be good enough that even though he doesn't have elite quickness, he may still be able to burn people due to how close they have to play to him to stop that jumper. Also, he's got really, really high basketball IQ on both the offensive and defensive end. Obviously, if you guys watch the Israel in the 20s team play at all, if he didn't have high IQ, he would not have gotten on for that basketball team. He loves to share the ball, which is a huge thing nowadays in NBA basketball. And I honestly think that if drafted by the right team in the right situation, he could be maybe the third or fourth best player on a championship team. And while a lot of people at the very top of the draft, they want a franchise player, which is something that this guy's not gonna be. I think that if it does happen with the way picks are just being swapped so often and teams can randomly have bad seasons with even the talent now in the NBA, I think if a really good team ends up in the top five or even maybe top 10, this guy's still there, they should probably take him. Maybe the Dallas Mavericks, if they somehow can end up pairing him up with Luka, that could be a great uh, partnership. Or even if a team like the San Antonio Spurs or the Utah Jazz can pick him up, he could be a great player. Basically any team that shares the ball and isn't gonna make him really create too much of his own offense, create too much at the dribble, or aren't really asking too much of him. Because he actually attended the NBA Top 100 camp last summer, where scouts noted that he was really good but didn't touch the ball much. And he even said it himself that it was hard for him to adapt from playing in Europe where everyone moves the ball and everyone touches the ball in an offense to playing in America where it's a lot more individual basketball and especially at the high school level, people more so than anything are just looking to be scouted and play college basketball. If you guys watch him play for that Israel national team, you guys can see that he doesn't force up too many shots, he doesn't take too many shots, he doesn't take dumb shots, he'll take smart shots, he'll move the ball well, he'll play good team defense, he'll play good team offense. And even though that's not the things that a lot of fans want to see, he's not gonna be box office, I think he's gonna be an extremely effective player at the NBA for that reason. Hopefully in the next year, he starts to get more and more minutes from Maccabi Tel Aviv at EuroLeague level. Right now, I think he's only played in one EuroLeague game, but he has played in nine games in the Israeli league, where his team are seven and two. He's played in them all, averaging about 10 minutes a game and three and a half points per game, which for a 17 year old is not bad. Compared to Luka Doncic, it is, but again, as I said at the start of the video, Luka Doncic was an exception. The fact that he's playing minutes in the top league in Israel at 17 years old and is on a EuroLeague roster and by the end of the season could be getting minutes at EuroLeague level is huge. And please do not underestimate how good the standard is of EuroLeague basketball. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.